ဒီနေ့ညမှာတော့ကျမတို့ကိုနှုတ်ကုပ်ပတ်တော့ဝင်ကခြင်းနဲ့အတူပြည်မှနိုင်ငံအတွက်ဖျားခင်စကားပြော
and fill our spirit. That you will speak to us. Will, you will inspire our hearts. To know that you are in control. And you are the God of hope. And that you will do the best that you can, Lord, for Myanmar. And so speak to us tonight. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just load my PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint. So I want to share tonight about a message that God has uh, laid upon my heart. And this is taken uh, from the book of Second Chronicles. And this has to do with a king called King Hezekiah. And as we look at the story of King Hezekiah, we begin to realize a certain pattern in his life. And so those of you who know your Bible will know that King Hezekiah has a father called King Ahaz. Uh, king Ahaz is actually a very evil king. And so King Hezekiah succeeded his father, King Ahaz. And Hezekiah was only 25 years old. And he reigned as a king for 29 years. And so King Hezekiah became a good king. And in the second chronicles 29 verse 2, it says that he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. Now, as we look at this story, I want to look it from the perspective of how God will bless a nation. So, the the father of King Hezekiah has done many evil things. But when King Hezekiah became king, he became a good king. So we want to look at what he did from Second Chronicles 29, chapter 29 to 32. And the first thing that he did was to confess and repent before God. And so number one he did was to consecrate himself. And what does consecration mean? That means we give ourselves to God for a higher purpose. And so in 2 Chronicles 29 verse 5, he said to is the Levites, consecrate yourself now and consecrate the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and remove all defilement from the sanctuary. Sorry, Pastor. Second Chronicle. Twenty-nine verse five. Twenty-nine. Nasakani Nasako Ange Ngapi Bare Alon Twimesu
So he told the Levites, the priests, consecrate yourself. And the second thing he did was purification. So he told the priests to remove every unclean things in the temple. And after he had done that, what he did was to offer, now asking the priests now to have burnt offerings and have temple worship. Because for a long time now, the temple of God, you know, was not used for worship. And so he introduced it back. And then the fourth thing he did was to have the Israelites now celebrate the Passover. To celebrate the Passover means to celebrate how God saved them. And then he got them now to remove all the idols around them. And when they have done that, he restored, asked them to restore back tithe and offering. Tithe and offering simply means that as people of God, we are dependent on our Heavenly Father. Now, when they have done all that, they discovered that there were enemies coming to attack them. Now, this tells us something. That even sometimes when we do everything that is right, and God still allow enemies to attack us. But there is always a purpose behind it. And that purpose you know, was to show to the Israelites that God is greater than the enemies around them. And so when the enemies were attacking them, you know, the first thing was not that they fight back, you know, with the uh, soldiers. And because they went through a period of cleansing, a period of, of consecrating themselves to God, the first thing they did was to worship and to pray to God. And because they have done that, God showed them a miracle. In fact, from 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 6 to 8, is an amazing miracle. And it says that the Lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders of officers in the camp of a Syrian king. So in other words, the, the Israelites do not need even to fight. But through the through the, the worship of God's people, that God fought for them. And 
And so King Hezekiah has great victory. He didn't even have to draw his sword. But God killed all the fighting men of the enemies. And so that was the miracle that King Hezekiah experienced. But then as we continue the story, we also see a point where King Hezekiah forgot the goodness of God. Because he got really very proud. Pride was his downfall. But, but, but he repented. And then God forgave him. Now, this is the lesson that we need to learn from this. That before God rescued the people from the enemies, there must be consecration and purification. And there must be the worship of God and burnt offerings. And then God's people must return to the roots of their faith. And they must declare their dependence on God. And, and they must remove all the idols in their life. And when that happened, even if we face attacks from enemies, the God will fight for us. But you must remember the steps. The steps is, first of all, our devotion to God. And God who knows all things will fight for us. And we must remember to remain humble before God. And so this is something that I feel that God is saying to us, even as a church. And so I want to just share with you that, you know, how then do we prepare ourselves, even as we face this enemy in front of us? There is something I believe God has to say to the church. And I also believe that God has something to say to the church of Myanmaris. That God says that, you know, I am in control. Even when you see with your eyes, things are going wrong. I am in control. And, and I will fight. You need just to worship me. And so this is something that I believe that as we come to this new year, I don't know how many of you make New Year resolutions. And then whenever we make New Year resolutions, we have to make it again the next year. And so generally, and we seem to be able not to keep to our New Year resolutions. And we think to ourselves what we want to do. And then sometimes we don't even consult God. 
ဘုရားကြီးကိုနာမမေးဘူးကိုလုတ်ချင်တာကိုရေးကြတာများတယ်အဲ့ဒီဝီကီဖေးလင်အာပြီလေပြီးရောက်မလုပ်နိုင်တ
And verse 34, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Harry Yeshua Babian Bioles, Naman can so diga, Yenina, and Temper to me, then the Tom Jamia or Nago Nimbe lay me. You see, Jesus knew Peter's pride. Yeshua Petria Mana would did it. He thinks that he can be a disciple by being strong himself. You Petria to go to Naga, no Coco Kai Mare Dulo, Nienere. And Jesus is trying to tell him, you know, through this, you will disown me. Not one times, but three times. Now, because Peter has such pride in his life. And guess what he said? He said, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. So he made that declaration again. It will never disown you. All the disciples were listening to him. They, they were actually quite upset with Peter. Because Peter seemed to suggest that he's the only one, you know, who can stand for Jesus. And then the Bible says, and all the other disciples said the same. So remember, they were actually fighting each other. Because there was so much pride in them. And they think they can be very strong disciples, not themselves. And we all know the story after that, right? All the disciples ran away. And Peter denied Jesus three times. Pedro, And so Peter was so heartbroken. Pedro, And he went back to fishing. And remember that story? Jesus appeared when after he was resurrected. He called Peter from the boat. And Peter was restored at the breakfast. And from all the mistakes that he made, if all the pride in his life, God has to deal with that. He's telling Peter, you cannot be a disciple with your own strength. And when he denied Jesus three times, he knew, he knew that he cannot be a disciple with his own strength. And so, you know, once he learned how to do that, then Jesus restored him. And Peter became one of the greatest apostles in church history. In fact, you know, certain story told us that you know, Peter was actually martyred. I mean, he died on the cross as well. And so when he was about to be nailed to the cross, he told his persecutors that 
Do not nail me like my Lord Jesus. He told his persecutors to nail him upside down. Because he said he was not worthy to die like his master. And so God was actually dealing with Peter about his pride. And I believe God would want to deal with many of us who have pride. Because we tend to think that we can do it on our own. Until we learn how to surrender to God, we, God cannot use us. And so I believe this is the message that God has for us. And that our dependence must be on God. And as you look at the situation in your own country, and as many of you may be facing different challenges in your life. You know, our, our mind, our spirit must be, you know, looking at Jesus. But we have so many distractions in our life. Distraction that will take away us from Jesus. Now there is this bird in America called cowbird. America cowbird Now this cowbird here lays eggs. Any cowbird no But this bird does not have any nest. Because this bird will lay their eggs in other birds' nests. So this bird doesn't need to build any nest. That means this bird will steal other people's nest. And the cowbird will lay the eggs in a nest where there are already other eggs. And this is the eggs of the cowbird will hatch first. And so this, and so this cowbird will go to many different nests and lay the eggs. And this one egg that he lays in this nest. And that egg will hatch first. And so the small bird of this cowbird will grow faster than the other eggs. And so you see on this picture here, the cowbird is the one on the right. And so the mother of the the the, egg, the mother of the other eggs will come back and feed the one that has the largest mouth. And so this cowbird, you know, chick will grow faster than the other birds. And eventually some of the other chicks will also die. Uh, now, so ma, I, 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 I,
but the cowbird will grow and fly away. Every cowbird ga sa sa we jila le jila o sun pi pi ro pi nda mi pi doare. Now when I I was thinking about this story. Jono di pi pi le o jono sin zare kama. Do you know our lions also have cowbirds? Me sui ti la jono ri ata drama le cowbird de shi da ba le. Because this the cowbird. Will be the one that take away every good thing that God has given to us. Every cowbird ga chenoru ye pawaare ma payad kin pithare akam zono yaru amyeran koko biro sadware. And these cowbirds could be idols in our life. Every cowbird dia ro chenoru ye pawaare ma shini de de um ba komle chenoru the ma thare yutu re payaye niyama thare ma yene koko emure. And these idols in our life will rob us of the fruitfulness in our life. Every mayone chenoru nitta nire ayya payata pobi uzapi re yariya chenoru athaya tambo shi re yari go pay sharp light de. And we become very weak Christians. Every kama chenoru ha ane re kriya ni pilare. And our our spiritual life may even be dying. Chenoru wuni ya atta de pipi ne. And I think God wants us to take away all these cowbirds in our life. Piyad kya? Chenori ate machine ne de cowbird de pecha sechne. So that we can become fruitful. Dhamma be chenoru ha ati ti de duri pila me. And so we need to ask ourselves, therefore, what are some of these things that uh, will not allow us to be fruitful? And so we need to look at what Jesus had to say. And in John 15, 5, uh, 15 verses 5 to 8, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yongan kani sa nga ang nga kani siya mapiobare nga nga ha sabiyep ng pide tino ha akain kami ang pide nga tena tili tino di nyaswa do adiro ko di di jale me nga na imtibu so tino ha abe amu ko miyama piunan cha. So note the last line. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, in our Christian life, we cannot do anything without Jesus. And the moment we try to do something without Jesus, we get into trouble. And and let me confess that even as a pastor, sometimes I can run ahead of God without asking Him. And sometimes even in our own life, we run ahead of God without asking Him. And even as we pray for the things uh, that we are passionate about, we also never ask God. So I'm reminded again and again this phrase, these words from John 15, apart from me, you can do anything. I cannot do anything. I don't think we get that. And I think that I think God is speaking to the church as well. And sometimes we come up with great programs. We can have good events. Do you know we can do all this and Jesus is not there? And that is why even in the prayer meeting like this, we can pray with passion. But the interesting question would be, is Jesus there? And so apart from me, you can, you can do nothing. 
ကျွန်တော်တို့ဘာမှမလုံးနိုင်မှုနော် But if we are in him we can do everything ဒါပေမဲ့ကျွန်တော်တို့ဟာသူ့အထဲမှာတည်ရဲဆိုရင်တော့ဘာမဆိုလုံးနိုင်နေသူတွေဖြစ်တယ် And so I want to help you remember this ဒါတော့ကျွန်တော်သင့်ကိုဒီယာလီကိုမှတ်မိစေချင်တယ် And it is with this big idea fruitfulness is Christ likeness. အဲ့တော့ကျွန်တော်ဒီ idea လေးတစ်ခုကိုပြောပြချင်တယ်အသီးသီးချင်းဆိုတာဟာခရစ်တော်နှင့်တူချင်းဖြစ်တယ် Yeah let me say that again fruitfulness is Christ likeness. အသီးသီးချင်းဆိုတာဟာခရစ်တော်နဲ့တူချင်းဖြစ်တယ် And when you are more like Christ the more fruitful you become. အဲ့တော့သဘောကသင်ဟာခရစ်တော်နဲ့တူလာလေလေအသီးအများကြီးသီးလာလေလေဖြစ်လာမယ်။And so I believe God is calling the church to return to him. ဒါကြောင့်မလိုအသင်းတော်ကိုခရစ်တော်ကပြန်မိခေါ်နေတဲ့ငါးစီကိုလာပါ is asking everyone every christian to return to him because some of us have cowards in our life that's been eaten up everything and we must remove all these idols from our life even as a pastor i have my own idols as well ကျွန်တော်သင်းဦးဆရာတယောက်နေနဲ့ကျွန်တော်မှာလေပဲကျွန်တော်ရဲ့အနော်ယုတ်ထူတွေရှိတတ်တယ်ကျွန်တော်
Because God need to get rid of this pride in our lives. And then Matthew 15 verses 8 to 9, it says that these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Yeah. Yes. And so here they say that people can honor me with their lips. They can even call out the name of Jesus. But their hearts are far, far from him. And verse 9 is a, it's a serious accusation. They worship me in vain. In other words, we can worship you and waste our effort. So, we must ask ourselves, how then do we bear good fruits? By dying to ourselves first. And so, Matthew chapter 3, verse 8 says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Repentance means that on a daily basis we confess to God and we turn away from our sins. And that is learning how to live holy lives. And then once again, a reminder, John 15 verse 5, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So all that we do in our life must reflect Jesus. And so what's the key to fruitfulness? Is Jesus in me? Yeshu Krito, Jano do ye attena shi jim pipare. It is not about doing many, many things for God. Jano do piatra, a miai miai lo ni raga, a diga do chem hoba. Now, all these things may be good things. A lo lo dari, kao nari shi bare. But we must learn to do what He tells us to do. And that is why every morning you wake up, we say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Guide me and lead me. Teach me and guide me. And tell me what to do. And when we learn how to do that every day, the Bible tells us that we will bear fruits. Not only do we bear fruit, we bear much fruit. And then we bear fruit that will last. Because the Bible tells us that one day everything that we do will be tested. Wouldn't it be said one day when one day when our works are tested, some burn away? Actually, there actually no use at all. Some of the works we do, the Bible says that it's like precious stone, it will not be burnt. So what kind of fruits do we want? Fruits that will burn away. Or fruits that will last. And the fruits that will last will be the fruits that Jesus asks you to do. And not only that, you know, when Jesus asks us to be fruitful, He helps us and provides that all we need to be fruitful. And 
And so my challenge to all of us is to learn how to serve God from a rested spirit. It's not about doing a lot or it's not about doing little. Because some of us, God may call us to do a lot. And maybe some of us, God will call us to do very little. The question is, what is He calling us to do? Because God is looking for faithful people. Because when God welcomes us, He will say, Well done, good and faithful servant. He didn't say, Well done, good and do many things to them, servants. He's saying, welcome, good and faithful servants. And so God has called us to be faithful. And the only, the only way you can be faithful is to listen to him. So as you are faithful to God, then and as you as you pray even for your own country, the first thing to ask God is, Lord, what are you saying to me about Myanmar? What are you telling me to pray? And there'll be some of us who may be in, in overseas country. It's the same thing, God, what do you want me to do in my country? And so when we learn how to do that, we listen to the voice of God. And things may go well. Or things may not go well according to what we expect. But we know that God is in control. And so, therefore, what are we trying to get at? To remember that Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And we are to stay connected with Christ. And learning to live a lifestyle called Jesus in me. And so this is, I believe, a message so important for us as God's leaders especially. See, as leaders, when we lead people, do we lead people to us? Or do we lead people to Christ? And, and that was what Jesus was trying to tell Peter. You are not leading people to yourself. Because of pride. Many of us want to be popular. Many of us want to have people clapping. I call it, we all of us are like clap addicts. We are always looking for the high in getting, hearing, clappings. 
အဲ့ဒီနော်ရိုးရဲ့ထိကမာနာလေးတွေရှိတယ်အဲဒီနော်ရိုးရဲ့အလုပ်ကလူတွေကိုခွတ်တော်ထံကိုခေါ်သွား
And while we are here, we listen to God what He has to say to us about doing. Because the better life is not here. The better life is on the new earth one day. So this world is not my home. But we remain faithful to Christ while here on this earth. God has called you to be Myanmaris. So you have a responsibility for Myanmar. You are to be the light of Christ in Myanmar. Because nobody can do a better job than you. And that is why, you know, when you come to pray like this, I think our prayer is that Jesus, what you have me do. How should I pray? And so I want to leave these thoughts with you. This is what I will pray for you. That you will listen to God and hear Him clearly. And will you lift your hands to the Lord right now? I'm going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, will you come? Lord, I pray that you will reveal yourself to my brothers and sisters every day. And will you put your hands to your ears right now? Holy Spirit, will you open up the ears? When you know Narigo Pimpiba, open up our eyes. Genorue Narigo Pimp, Genorue Messirio Pimpiba, that we may hear the voice of God. Guruye Tano Gujana Mumazaba, that we may see the things of God. Guru Nessine Yarigo Mumazaba, because Jesus said, I will only do what I see my father do. Yeshu ga pyo bare nga ha nga khami ro lo te ya ko myen yue da pyu de And Jesus said I will only do what my father says Yeshu ga pyo de nga ha nga khami ro pyo de ya ko da pyo de And when he does that he begin to move powerfully Yeshu a lo lo de kha ma tu lo tamya ya a lo ma tu ko pa la de And forgive us many times Lord that we try to do things our way May we learn to hear the voice of God. May we learn to say good morning, Holy Spirit. What would you have me do? What would you have me say? I pray that, Lord, as we listen to your voice, you will begin to use us in a powerful way. And so, Lord, release your spirit right now. Touch every heart wherever they are watching this. That they may even sense your Holy Spirit in a powerful way where they are. Fill them, I pray, Lord. Fill them from the top of their head to the tips of their toe, Lord. And fill them, Lord, with overflowing. Seal all these good things in their life. 
And this is what I sense the Lord saying to you who have been praying for your country. And simply this, this one phrase. He says, I am in control. I know what's going on. I am in control. And whatever that will happen, it is for my glory. That when the church begins to walk in holiness, God will defeat his enemies. Always, always to see people coming to know Jesus. Because knowing Jesus will break down all the curses upon the nation. And so we pray for God's people in Myanmar. Whether they are locally in their own country or, you know, they have resettled overseas. You have heard their prayers. But in the name of Jesus, because of God's people, the blessings of God will flow. So, Lord, we pray for everyone, Lord, especially family members, God, of the Myanmar Church. Not only will you protect them, but you will use them, God, to share Christ. And people will come to know you in greater numbers. Seal that, Lord, into every heart tonight. And I pray all this. Pray all this in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. You're welcome, Pastor Sarah. Yes. Okay.